Hello. This week is National Crime Victims' Rights Week. While our work focuses on the rights of victims every day, we speak out this week to remind ourselves and the community how important the role of crime victims and their families are. Listening to the voices of crime victims and survivors is a critical component during all stages of the criminal justice process. It is something the United States government has recognized since President Ronald Reagan created the Task Force on Victims of Crime in 1982, leading to the passage of the Victims of Crime Act in 1984. Following the passage of this act, Louisiana enshrined a Victims' Bill of Rights into our Constitution. This Bill of Rights requires that victims and survivors be advised of all critical court proceedings and allows for victim impact statements during all felony and some misdemeanor sentencing hearings. Additionally, the Louisiana Children's Code includes rights for victims of crime which are adjudicated by the juvenile justice system. Here are the highlights of several of the rights that Louisiana guarantees victims of crime presented by some of the dedicated assistant district attorneys who serve Jefferson Parish. As a victim or as a family member of somebody who is the victim, you have a right to give a victim impact statement. A lot of times the process can seem like you're just a spectator and you're not actually participating in it, but the victim impact gives you a chance to participate and tell both the judge and the defendant how this has affected you both emotionally, you know, not just when it happened, but thereafter. And that can be considered for sentencing and for just some sort of peace of mind and closure to tell someone what they did and how it affected you. Victims do not give up their rights just because the case is in juvenile court. Article 811.1 of the, code of, of the Children's Code provides for victims' rights in juvenile court. First and foremost, the court shall provide, whenever, whenever practical, a secure waiting room that is separate and apart from the defendant and the defendant's family. The DA's office has certain responsibilities to keep you informed of a case involving a juvenile. Specifically, an arrest, any release pending trial when there's violent crimes, as well as the trial dates and sentencing dates. Additionally, anytime you receive a subpoena, you have a right to be placed on standby meaning you don't have to waste a trip up to court for a case that's not going to go forward on that particular day. You will have the right to contact the DA's office and to be held, stay at work, school, wherever you are, pending your actual need to come to court. Finally, the DA's office is required to discuss with you and confer with you regarding any plea deals, any dispositional alternatives, disposition meaning a sentence, um, as well as um, a decision to either dismiss a charge or to go to trial. The important thing to remember though is that all the information that the DA's office shares with you about a juvenile matter is subject to the confidentiality rules that apply to juvenile court. The law provides that victims of sex offenses, of human trafficking, and victims who are children have a right to privacy, meaning that their names, addresses, and personal info cannot be publicly disclosed. Not only do we want to meet with you, but we have to meet with you to be adequately prepared for your case. We'll meet with you in a private setting with just us. Sometimes defense attorneys will ask to meet with you outside of our presence. You don't have to do that if you don't want to.